Psalm 111. We'll begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says this, Praise ye the Lord. We had a little bit of that going on here a few minutes ago. It said, I will praise the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright and in the congregation. The works of the Lord are great, sought out of all them that have pleasure therein. His work is honorable and glorious, and His righteousness endureth forever. He hath made His wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He hath given meat unto them that fear Him. He will ever be mindful of His covenant. He hath showed His people the power of His works, that He may give them the heritage of the heathen. The works of His hands are verity and judgment. All of His commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever, and are done in truth and uprightness. He sent redemption unto His people. He hath commanded His covenant forever. Holy and reverend is His name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do His commandments. His praise endureth forever. Let's pray. Father, we bless You. We are so grateful for Your good grace. We are thankful, Lord, for the good singing. We are thankful for the wonderful testimonies. We are thankful for the presence of Thy people. But more importantly, Lord, we're thankful for your presence. Lord, thank you for already meeting with us. Lord, we could just close out this prayer and go to the house and say it was good to be in your house tonight. Now, Father, I do pray for Brother Phil that you'd help him with his struggles. Lord, I can't imagine what he's going through. And God, I pray you'd undergird him in your love and in your grace. And Lord, I pray that, Lord, you do that song that, he sang, you'd empty him of those things that, Lord, drag him down, and you'd fill him with yourself. And God, I pray you'd help him. I pray for Brother James, who said he's struggling with some things that is going on in this world, and it's really affecting him. Lord, when you look around at this world, it, it is discouraging and depressing that what we once knew as America is no longer uh, in place today. And God, I pray for Brother James, you'd help him. Others, Lord, that are struggling, others that have needs, others that are sick. God, I pray you'd touch them and help them. Now for the next few minutes, uh, help us from the Word of God. Thy Word is like a lamp unto our feet and a light into our path. Thy Word is forever settled in heaven. Lord, Thy Word is what will help us, what will grow our faith, what will strengthen our inner man, what will cause us to shine in this dark and uh, just dreary world that we live in. Now, Father, help these, help those that are watching via live stream, bless and help those in the hospital. God, bless those that are working with the children on the other side, and those working with the teens, help them the same. And, Father, we'll give you the glory for what you do, for it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to a few things about this wonderful chapter that I love so much. I want you to notice what it says about the works of God. Notice, first of all, it said the works of God are great. Look in verse number 2. The Bible says the works of the Lord are great. Pretty clear. Now I want you to look around. Those in here saved by the good grace of God. The works of God are great. There's folks in here that was raised in church, and sat on a church pew, uh, but one day sitting on the church pew realized they was lost uh, and came and gave their hearts and lives to Jesus. Uh, there's some in here uh, 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 that wasn't raised uh, in a Baptist church, uh, 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 but they was raised around church and the things of God, uh, and uh, lo and behold, God touched their hearts, uh, and then God opened their eyes, and they're here tonight. Uh, the works of the Lord are great. Uh, there's folks in here tonight uh, that lived a hellish life, uh, that were heathens, uh, that 
that God was nowhere in their minds, uh, uh, but somehow God interrupted their lives uh, and God touched their hearts uh, and they're here tonight. Uh, I want you to look around. The works of the Lord are great. Hallelujah. Huh? Everybody's looking for a miracle, friend. I've got one for you. Just look around. Do you know it's a miracle that folks that once were bound for hell are bound for heaven. Uh, and God did a work in their life. The works of the Lord are great. Can I say the works of the Lord are glorious? Look at verse number 3. It says His work is honorable and glorious. Uh, let me help you something. There's always somebody looking uh, for somebody with fanfare, somebody whose name's in light, somebody they can be astounded by. Look at them. Uh, uh, look at their lifestyle. Look at all they have. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Uh, I've got news for you. The works of the Lord are glorious. Uh, his glory outsides them all. Uh, hey, look unto His wonderments. Uh, hey, God spoke and it happened. Uh, uh, God's the one uh, that forms a baby in the womb. God's the one uh, that tells the sun when to shine. God's the one uh, that keeps his earth spinning on her axis. Uh, God's the one uh, that still gives us a spirit of giving and a spirit of goodness. Uh, I'm telling you, the works of God are glorious. Uh, they're great. They're glorious. Uh, but the works of the Lord also guidepost. Look in verse number 4. The Bible says... Uh, 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 the works of the Lord in verse number 4 he hath made his wonderful works to be remembered they're guidepost there's something that you need to remember you need to build a landmark in your mind to remember the works of the Lord I want to tell you something you get to look around this world and seeing all that's going on and there's a lot going on and if you're trusting the mainstream media to report it to you, you're in a heap of trouble. As we sit here tonight, the uh, Prime Minister of Canada has invited the Chinese to bring troops over and train with the Canadian troops. Uh, now that might not mean anything to you, uh, but our worst enemy today as Americans are the Chinese. Uh, and they're going to have troops camped at our northern border. That may set well with you, but it doesn't set well with me. The President has drawn uh, naval forces back to our coastline. Uh, 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 listen, uh, 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 I can just see the uh, everything on the horizon and the Lord's coming soon. Uh, uh, but hey, when you look around this world, uh, you look at what's going on in, in our country with the election, with politics, with the pandemic, uh, uh, with all the control they're putting over you without science, uh, uh, how you conduct yourselves, uh, when you can leave your house and can't leave your house, and you got to wear a mask in a restaurant if you go to a restaurant, all these things, uh, well, I'm afraid it'll bring you down. Uh, but if you keep the works of the Lord in your remembrance, uh, if you realize, uh, hey, uh, the trumpet's about to sound, uh, he's going to step out on the clouds, uh, and with the voice and the shout of an archangel, uh, he's going to say, come up hither, uh, and you and I that are saved, uh, we're out of here. Uh, you keep that in your mind, and friend, that'll help you down this road. The works of the Lord are guideposts. You need to remember when you got saved, what, what garbage dump God found you in. How all that lostness uh, 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 enveloped your life and it chained you and it imprisoned you uh, and it held you down. Uh, but when you came to Jesus, He set you free. You need to remember that, friend, because uh, you're free indeed, huh? The works of the Lord are great, they're glorious, they're guideposts. Uh, but can I say this? The works of the Lord are guaranteed. Uh, look at verse number 7. The works of his hands are verity, which means true, and judgment, and all his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever and are done in truth and uprightness. If God ever promised it, if God ever said it, if God ever promised you something, it's guaranteed, friend. His works are verity and true. Hey, they're sure, they're forever, and his works are guaranteed. Hmm. A lot of people putting all their future based on the stock market. Right now it's looking pretty good. But if this year's taught us anything, it doesn't take much to change the whole world. But I've got good news. Anything you've laid up in heaven, it's guaranteed. Huh? 
anything that you based on what God said, it's guaranteed. It's impossible for God to lie to you. If he said it, that settles it, friend. His works are guaranteed. Hmm? Aren't you glad his works are better than the works of a mechanic at the auto shop? How many of you get up every morning and fret whether or not the sun's going to shine? But it shines every morning. Hmm? Hmm? You know why you don't fret about it? Because it's always happened. You know why it's always happened? Because God's works are guaranteed. Mm. Uh, God don't need Cooper Pyle up there fixing the sun. Right. Mm. Mm. His works are guaranteed. Mm. Uh, it'd be good for you, some of you, to wring your hands wondering not, whether or not you're saved or not. Get that thing nailed because his works are guaranteed. You know why I know I'm going to heaven? Because his works are guaranteed. Mm. Then I thought about this his works are gracious. Look at verse number 9. Verse number 9 says, He sent redemption unto His people. Now, that's about as gracious as it gets that God sent redemption or salvation to His people. He didn't have to send us salvation, but because of His grace, He did. His grace says, We don't get what we deserve, we get salvation. We deserve damnation, but we get salvation because the works of the Lord are gracious. He looked at us in pity and love. Uh, he knew we couldn't save ourselves. Uh, he knew we couldn't be holy. Uh, he knew we had no hope outside of Him. Uh, and God, in His graciousness, looked down and said, I'll be their hope. Uh, I'll send them salvation. Uh, I'll send them redemption. Uh, I'll let them know the good grace of God. Uh, his works are gracious. I'm interested in verse number 9. The Bible says, He sent redemption unto His people, hath commanded His covenant forever, holy and reverend is His name. That is the only place in the Bible you find the word reverend. And it says, holy and reverend are His name. Nowhere do you find that term associated with a man. That's why I don't let people call me Reverend Foster. There's nothing reverend about me. If you don't believe me, ask my wife. Huh? You say, well, it's respect for your title. No, my title's pastor, not reverend. Reverend only refers to God. And he's the only one that can use that name because he's revered, because he's holy. It said, holy and reverend is his name. Why do you think so many that are heathen cuss his name? Despise his name? Hmm? I heard this the other day. I thought this was pretty good. It said, how come atheists never protest Satanists? Under the guidelines of separation church and state and the First Amendment of the Constitution, Satanists are allowed to assemble and worship Satan. And under the dictates of the law, they're a religion. And how come the atheists never protest Satanists? How come they only protest people that want to have Christmas? And people that want to believe the Bible? And people that want to call themselves Christian? And people that praise the name of Jesus? Hmm? Because holy and reverend is His name. And I want to preach for just a couple minutes on there's something about his name. There's just something about his name. Huh? I'm glad that we're called by his name, aren't you? I'm glad they call us Christian. Huh? I'm glad they call us by his name. Hmm? You know what that means? That means I'm not what I used to be. Hmm? Used to be, I was known as just sorry, no good, Dougie Snot Foster. But I met the Lord. And now I'm called Christian. I'm a Christian. And God's given us a new name. It's probably fashioned after His name. But we're called by His name because there's just something about His name. That's why the atheists don't protest the Satanists. There ain't nothing behind that name. 
but there's something about the name that we're known after. Uh, uh, the Bible says in Acts 4.12, Neither is there salvation in any other, uh, for there's none other name under heaven given among men uh, whereby we must be saved. Uh, there's just something about His name. Uh, Isaiah 9.6 says, For unto us a child is born, uh, unto us a son is given, uh, and the government shall be upon His shoulder. Here it is. Uh, and His name uh, shall be called Wonderful, uh, Counselor, uh, the Mighty God, uh, the Everlasting Father, uh, the Prince of Peace. Uh, there's something about His name. Uh, uh, Matthew one twenty five says, uh, and speaking of Joseph, uh, and knew her not uh, till she had brought forth her firstborn son, uh, and he called his name uh, Jesus. Uh, Jesus. Uh, Jesus, there's just something about his name. Uh, uh, Philippians 2.10 says uh, that at, uh, at the name of Jesus, uh, every knee should bow uh, of things in heaven, uh, things in earth, uh, and things under the earth. Uh, friend, there's just something about his name. Hallelujah. I got to thinking about him. Holy and reverend is his name. Can I say this tonight? In the name of Jesus, you'll find there's no problem he cannot solve. No problem he cannot solve. No matter how big it is for you, it's no problem to him. Uh, Y'all remember them Rubik's Cubes? I hated them things. One time I took all the stickers off and put them all lined up where it looked like I solved it. I, now my daughter, she can solve one in about 30 seconds. Just boom, 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 there. She used to for fun, would just mess it up and do it, just to make me sick. Uh, Rubik's Cube's a problem I cannot solve. I can't do it. Uh, don't have the patience, don't have the time. I can throw it through a wall, but I can't solve the thing. Uh, now I'm going to tell you there are some things in life you won't be able to solve going to be too big for you, too hard for you. It'll frustrate you. It'll weigh you down. Uh, 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 you want to throw your hands up. Uh, you'll think, what's the use? Uh, uh, but friends, uh, uh, about the time you throw them up, why don't you just look a little higher uh, and throw them up towards Him and say, Lord, this is too big for me, uh, but it's not too big for you. Uh, uh, friend, uh, uh, His name was given uh, uh, so His stripes we could be healed. Uh, but not only that, uh, His name was given uh, us and all of our problems. We know we're counting on somebody big than us. Uh, there's not a problem he can't solve. Can I say there's not a power he can't subdue? Brother Phil said it might be one of them demons messing with you. I got new, good news for you. The blood of Jesus whips that demon every day. Uh, there's no power he cannot subdue. Uh, uh, can I say uh, he's never even been challenged. Uh, uh, the devil, all he did was bruise the heel of Jesus. Uh, uh, Jesus uh, bruised his head at Calvary. Uh, and there's coming a day Jesus is going to bind him for a thousand years. Uh, then there's coming another day uh, where they're going to bind him and throw him off in the lake of fire forever and ever and ever. There's no power he cannot subdue. Amen. Do not be dismayed. There is spiritual wickedness in high places in this world. There is a demonic force in this world. Demons are trying to bring you down uh, so you won't share the light and the love and the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, but demons are trying to chain people uh, and possess people uh, and keep people from accepting the Lord uh, uh, so they'll die and go to hell. Uh, uh, and I'm telling you, uh, uh, all hell's about to be unleashed on this earth uh, and the devil's having his heyday. Uh, but I've got good news. Uh, uh, there's no power or principality uh, that he cannot subdue and take care of. Uh, you need to quit trying to handle some of this stuff on your own and get the name of Jesus involved. There's just something about his name. Hey, can I say this? There's no pain that he cannot soothe. No pain that he cannot soothe. Say, Brother Doug, I hurt so bad. I believe you. But if you'd learn in those days when you hurt so bad to just speak His name, just say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. He may not take the pain away, but He'll take you to a new plane to where the pain don't affect you as much. 
There's no pain he cannot sue. There's power in his name, friend. Uh, there's something about his name. It's holy and it's reverend. When you speak his name, all hell trembles. When you speak his name, the very things that affect you won't affect you like they are because he will lift you higher than you thought you'd ever could be. There's no pain that he can't soothe. I've got news for you. There's something about his name. There's no path that he can't straighten. In this life, you've got a lot of paths. You don't know which, which direction it's going. You'll face crooked paths. You'll face curvy paths. Uh, you'll face paths that go up and down and all around. Uh, and you're wondering, Lord, where are you taking me? But if you can get him involved, even though you still got to walk curves, they'll seem straight because you're walking with him. And nothing, nothing bothers you when you're walking with him. Hmm? When I'm walking hand in hand with the Lord, it don't matter. It don't matter if it's curvy, up and down, crooked. It don't matter because I'm with Him. Because He straightens your paths. Hmm? There's just something about His name. You just need to get Him involved. You see, we don't get Him involved until the bottom falls out. If you'd learn to just get Him involved at the onset, you'll have so much better of a day. You say, well, that caused you for not getting hit with a car? No, that might not cause that. But I got news for you. You get hit with a car, you'll still be thankful that the car didn't run over you. And he'll help you through all that. I told Brother James, I said, he needs to work this thing where he gets about $250,000 out of it and ties to the church. Huh. Hey, I'm always thinking about the church. But James, I hope you're okay, but give your money to the church in case you aren't. Huh. Lord, have mercy. I'm glad he's okay. Uh, could have been a lot worse. Uh, I'm just trying to help you. You just need to keep Jesus involved in your life because you never know when a car is coming at you. You never know when a demon's coming at you. You never know when there's a virus coming at you. You never know. I said it this morning. I mean, if it wasn't God's will for you to have it, you wouldn't have got it. Hmm? There's no path he cannot straighten. And I say this, there's no prayer that he can't satisfy. So preacher, I've been praying and I've been praying and I've been praying. No answers come. The Lord always answers a prayer in three ways. Yes, no, and not now. Let's keep praying. There's no prayer that he cannot satisfy. How many times do you think Hannah prayed for a child before God heard her prayer? Now God heard every prayer. But God waited until Hannah's was broken and dependent on God. And then God sent her little Eli, or sent her little Samuel. He said, what are you trying to say, preacher? God hears the prayers. Just keep praying. And when your heart's in tune with his heart, there's no prayer he can't satisfy. There's nothing he can't satisfy. Hmm. Hmm. I look at him, Brother Luther sent me. He hears and answers prayer. Hmm. And it's a joyful thing when the answer comes. There's no prayer he cannot satisfy. There's something about his name. And can I say this? There's no person he cannot save. Hmm? I'm glad that salvation's not contingent on us. You know, if it's contingent on man, you'd have to live on a certain side of the tracks. You'd have to meet a certain parameter of qualifications. You'd have to go through a certain level of hoops. You'd have to earn a certain portion of it. But see, he didn't base it on man. Salvation's based on him. It don't matter what side of the tracks. Don't matter what color your skin. Don't matter what language you speak. Don't matter how much you got in your money. Doesn't matter how much sin you've done. Doesn't matter how far you've went. Doesn't matter how wicked you are. Doesn't matter how good you are. Doesn't matter anything. Everybody's a sinner. Everybody's condemned to death. Uh, everybody's going to die and go to hell unless uh, they give their heart and life to Jesus. Uh, and there's no person that He cannot save. Uh, there's no person that He won't change their life. Uh, it still says, Whosoever will may come. Uh, hey, God so loved the world uh, that whosoever will, it's a whosoever will gospel. Because uh, there's no person that He cannot 
not save. He's just that good of a God. His works are great. They're glorious. They're gracious. There's just something about the name of Jesus. Here's you something that'll help you. That co-worker gets on your nerves. Heaven help you if you work with your spouse, Miss Veronica and Brian. But that co-worker gets on your nerves. Next time they come around getting on your nerves, maybe they got a filthy mouth. Maybe they tell filthy jokes. Maybe they just vex you. There's some people that know how to get under your skin. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that person, here's how you solve that problem. Next time they come, just start going, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. You say, preacher, I think I'm a fool. They won't vex you anymore. Matter of fact, they'll run from you. You'll vex them. Yep. But you know what that'll do? It might change their life. Because there's power in His name. Amen. Huh? You know why they act the way they act? They're lost. They're lost. Mm. Lost people get under your skin. Lost people are headed to hell. Rather than let them get to you, why don't you get to them with the gospel? Just say, Jesus. Jesus. Somebody comes over and dropping four letter words, you drop a five letter word on them. Jesus. 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 Say, what are you doing? He said, I want to hear something that's sweet and lovely to my soul. His name's Jesus. Your filthy mouth vexes me, but there's something about his name. I just love it. It lifts me up. Huh? They'll think you're crazy. It don't matter. Huh? You're going to heaven. There's something about his name. It's holy. It's reverend. They don't like it. That's why years ago they started calling it Xmas. And then some of them Bible correctors say, well, the X represents the cross. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, the X means it's missing something. And what it's missing is Christ. Right. Right. Huh? Matter of fact, we can drop the Mass. Just call it Christ Day. It'd be all right with me. Yeah. It's all about Him. I haven't busted him by his bubble on Sunday mornings yet on this thing. You know, he wasn't born December 25th. Huh? The shepherds didn't have their, you know, they weren't keeping watch over their flocks in the fields by night at Christmas time, at, at winter time. He was probably born in late September, which is a good time to be born. That's when I was born, late September. All right? But it don't matter when, what matters is that he did. He came. And if the world chooses December 25th to celebrate it, celebrate the far out of it. But make sure you're celebrating Him. Because there's something about His name. When was the last time you just appreciated that His name's attached to you, being a child of God? Hmm? When was the last time you just thanked Him that His works have been good and glorious in your life? Hmm? When was the last time you thanked Him for His grace? Huh? You know, the grace of God befell quite a few of you. You were sick. He didn't have to bring you through it. There are some people that died of COVID. Not as many as they're counting. But there are some that died of it. Some that don't recover from it. And some in various different ages. There are young people that died of COVID. Huh? But God and His graciousness brought you through it. It was the last time you think, well, time. you know what? One thing it'll do is make you appreciate getting to come to church again, won't it? Hmm? His works are glorious. His works are great. His works are gracious. Holy and reverence His name. There's nothing that He can't accomplish in your life. Many times He's just waiting on you and I to let Him. Revelation 3 is still in the book. I stand outside the door and knock. If any man will open up, I'll come into him, sup with him, and he with me. Sometimes he wants to come in and change and rearrange things in your life, but you won't open up your heart to let him in. Holy and reverence his name. Why don't you just let him take control? Say, so, preach, you don't know what I'm going through. No, I don't. But I know it's not too big for Jesus. It may be too big for you, but not too big for him. Why don't you, my dear friend, let him have it? Tonight be a good time. Say, Lord, this thing's too big for me. Here it is. I'm giving it to you because, Lord, I know it's not too big for you. You'd be amazed how much business picks up in your life when you let Jesus and His power take control of your life.
I've asked Brother James to sing that song we sing, sung this morning for an invitation. He got to singing that, and I'm thinking, Lord, am I supposed to preach that this morning? No, it was right on time tonight. So they're going to come. Let's all stand. We're going to have an invitation. Maybe you need to come and thank him for being good to you. Maybe you need to come tell him you love him. Maybe you need to come and lay something down at his feet that's too big for you. Friend, he can handle it. Yes. Why don't you let him have it tonight? Folks are coming. They're getting ready to sing. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Lord, I'm gra- glad there's nothing like you, your name, and the power behind it. Now, Lord, there's no telling who here tonight or who watched tonight needed to hear that you're well able to take care of them. So, Father, help folks tonight. Bless now in this invitation. Save that one nearest hell. Get glory to your name. And, Lord, help us to live up to your name because you're worthy. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.